Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Mango Thunderslice, and I'm bringing you a very important message today. Uh, I think that this is a very valuable key in what perspective we all kind of need to move forward as a society. And I've already alluded to in previous videos about how Einstein is not really the... Uh, He's not the real deal that people think that uh, he really is, and his contributions to physics, while definitely not useless, he definitely produced some useful things uh, in general relativity, both general relativity and special relativity, uh, is basically a house of cards of theoretical just postulation, just people doing little math formulas and supposing this and supposing that without any real laboratory confirmation of any of this uh, just wild mass of theory. So I'm going to be elucidating this topic a little bit today and uh, yeah, so this one is called uh, <laughs> The Man Who Disproved Einstein. It wasn't me. In fact, it was long before I was even a twinkle in me father's eye. <laughs> All right, and that man was Dayton Miller, and in 1933, he, his work basically was published showing unequivocal proof of the existence of the ether. Okay, the cosmic ether, which I've mentioned in previous videos, the fundamental crime of Einstein and his followers was that they demolished in the public mind, they didn't demolish the reality of it, but they demolished in the public mind the idea that there is a medium, a, a sort of fluid-like substance that we're moving through as a planet, as a solar system. It encompasses the entire universe. And in it's funny, in denying the existence of the ether, they've had to come up with all these really metaphysical, weird workarounds to their theory, like dark energy and dark matter, as I've alluded several times. But it's just funny because they notice that there should be something else in space, right? They, they see this effect of the motion, effect of gravitation on all these bodies throughout the universe, but they don't see any mass. And so, you know, these materialists who only believe what they can see, uh, they did just, you know, they have to come up with all these strange explanations to make up for the fact that they took something out of physics that was there and the brightest minds of the world uh, accepted as a valid theory. Even Einstein himself, to those who think the ether is just this woo-woo, metaphysical, just, yeah, new age concept, okay? This goes back a long time. And, you know, Nikola Tesla, who virtually everything in our modern world was invented by Tesla, the, all the Wi-Fi and radio transmission, it basically, uh, you know, all these uh, uh, alternating current, electricity, right? Okay, everything that we have is a result of Nikola Tesla. And this was a man who was engineering with the assumption that the ether did exist. And his machines work, and they work a lot better than most machines do <laughs> that have been invented by humans. Okay, on the other hand, we have relativity. What the hell have they produced? Okay, they've sent some uh, satellites, you know, throughout the solar system, very commendable work. But in so many of these instances, th there's motion and uh, anomalies, right, that they couldn't predict. So they, they have, yes, built these machines and sent them throughout the solar system. But they, that doesn't necessarily mean that their theory is just flawless. There's all these anomalies that they can't explain. And, you know, as usual, they like to just sweep them under the rug. So back to the main point. The proof, okay, if the ether exists, it's not this just philosophical concept that nobody can ever prove, okay? The ether, and again, this is, I'm going to tie this back into orgone. Wilhelm Reich, the orgone energy of uh, living beings, is also the ether. They are the same concept. Okay, and this is the beautiful thing about living right now is we get to pick up the pieces from all these great minds who came before us and assemble them into a big picture. Put all of our puzzle pieces together and what is the picture that we see? That's the question, open question that we're all asking. And the picture that I'm starting to see <laughs> is that the earth is in a sea. Okay, it's in a sea of energy called the ether. It is the fifth fundamental state of energy and mass, in a sense, in this universe. All right, we have fire, which is plasma. We have water, which is liquid. We have earth, which is solid. We have air, which is gas. And we have ether, which is the medium that unites them all and allows the transmission of energy throughout the universe. And so the alternative to this in relativity is 
space time, okay? They want to call me crazy for doing this research and, you know, honestly appraising the idea of, you know, the most, like, esteemed minds throughout history, the ones who built civilization, okay? These cheerleaders of science and statistics, you know, people just fiddling with other people's data, they don't create the world, okay? You can really only prove or disprove something by experiment, okay? If you're saying, we proved or disproved this because of your mathematical models, it's bullshit. Get over it. Get over it. Your math does not substitute for reality. Your math is totally useful and awesome if it pertains to reality and it it provides, a, um, you know, predictable uh, you know, ex explanation of why things would happen. And, you know, in astronomy, it's failing, totally. On the other hand, we have the electric universe guys, the plasma cosmologists who operate with the assumption, uh, based on experimental evidence, that the ether does, in fact, exist. And their predictions, they hit home every time, with, whether it's comets or energy flows throughout the universe or all these different phenomena that we're witnessing together as a species in the realm of astronomy. It can predict them. It doesn't have to be like, what the hell is happening? After every single new discussion, there with electricity and gravity or electricity and magnetism factored into our picture, adding those puzzle pieces back into the puzzle, everything starts to make a lot more sense. You don't have to use gravity to explain all this crazy shit that we see. <laughs> so Back to the main point, Dayton Miller, 1933. He did experiments continuing the work of uh, two scientists called uh, Michelson and Morley with a device called an interferometer. Okay, what's an interferometer? It is basically a cross-like beam thing that with mirrors and it bends a light beam back and forth. Like bet there's a like a diagonal mirror in the middle and it just bends light back and forth and uh, it crosses in the center. Okay, and this is basically a way of measuring, uh, in a sense, the speed of light, and more specifically for these experiments was measuring the deviations in the speed of light. Of course, in relativity, the speed of light is supposed to be the same constant everywhere measured in any direction. It's always the same. And it's hilarious, in a sense, that in every physics textbook that they will give you in school uh, in the United States, is basically they say the Michelson Morley experiment uh, provided a null result and is proof that the ether doesn't exist. Okay, they don't really mention Miller, who took kind of their premise and, and ran with it and did tons of experiments on a bigger machine, a bigger interferometer, and did, you know, way, uh, was able to generate way more data. And in effect, the funny thing is, both Michelson Morley and Dayton Miller's work proved this same thing, that the ether does exist. What's funny is they say in all these books that it doesn't, because Michelson and Morley, as well as Miller to another extent, were expecting, they had a, a conception of the ether as basically this, this uh, stagnant or static force, and so as the Earth moved around the Sun and throughout the universe, they expected a very fast kind of ether wind, right? Because it, it was stagnant and the Earth was moving through it. And so what's, again, what's funny is they got a positive result. They said their experiments said, yes, there is an ether and there's deviations in the speed of light corresponding to where the Earth is in its orbit around the Sun. Okay. <laughs> It, but because the result wasn't as big as they re expected, they, they, the physics community calls it a null result, and that it, it, it's a negative, you know, disproved ether. It didn't! It proved the ether! It just didn't line up with their conception of what the ether was and how it's moving around the Earth and throughout the universe. Okay? And to summarize, basically, what they were wrong about, based on what I've learned and what I'm researching, is that the ether is not this stagnant thing that the earth is moving through it's actually like a wind that's basically pushing or pulling in effect the earth throughout the cosmos as well as the sun the bees all these bodies the sun and the planets are spinning as a result of electromagnetic energy coming into them transmitted by the ether and that in effect we are kind of riding a wave our solar system is riding an etheric wave and the earth is moving through it and so 
the result of the, the variations in the speed of light, which of course in relativity shouldn't exist, but it does, what Miller found through all of his thousands and thousands and thousands of turns of this interferometer, getting all this data, is that no matter how much he isolated all the variables, all of his critics, you know, this guy, let me just read like his, uh, <laughs> his bio real quick. <laughs> all right, so Dayton Clarence Miller, born March 13th, 1866, died February 22, uh, 1941, American physicist, astronomer, acoustician, and uh, apparently played the flute too. <laughs> Born in Ohio, uh, he got a doctorate in astronomy at Princeton University uh, in 1890. He spent his entire career teaching physics at the Case School of Applied Science in Cleveland, Ohio, and as head of the physics department uh, from 1893 until his retirement in 1936. <laughs> Uh, he was active in many scientific organizations. Miller was a member of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences and the American Philosophical Society. Uh, during the 1920s, he was secretary, vice president, and president. So he served in different functions of the American Physical Society and chairman of the Division of Physical Sciences of the National Research Council. Also president of the Acoustical Society of America. This is the beauty. Musical minds understand the nature of the universe, but these people sitting at their little computers and, you know, just looking at the numbers, they can't see nature, they can't see reality. All they see is their little computations. It's obvious, okay? And so, to sum it up, he was a woo-woo peddling nobody, you know, who lived on the street and just, you know, babbled to passers-by, right? No, this guy has cred, okay? He was a physicist. He was not trying to prove the existence of the ether. He really wanted to find out the answer. Like a true scientist, he didn't have an idea. He wanted to find the answer. And though, you know, we all might have our biases, that is the essence of true science, is setting that bias aside and being willing to be proven wrong. I'm willing for gravity to be right. It's the idea of curving space, which of course space is nothing, so how you curve nothing, you know, doesn't make sense to me. And dark matter and dark energy doesn't make sense to me. It's, it's all very metaphysical, whereas on the other hand, they call the ether metaphysical, but it's the simplest explanation for all these phenomena, and that the universe is electric, there's vast flows of energy flowing throughout it, and it's all living in a sense. It's all alive and conscious. And with this idea of energetic exchange throughout the cosmos, these spiritual concepts come back to the forefront. And we have a model of explaining the experiences that the human race is having. Lucid dreaming, out-of-body experiences, ghosts, uh, you know, uh, alien encounters, whatever you want to call them, okay? <laughs> Reality is not so materially objective like the relativity folk have been saying for decades, all right? They basically proclaimed the ether dead when... After Miller died, pretty much nobody was looking at this question. They swept it all under the rug. One of his former students basically went and hacked the thing, to, hacked all of his work to pieces after he was dead, saying, oh yeah, it was all because of a temper, temperature variation. Just saying a bunch of nonsense that, like, Dayton Miller isolated for all the variables, and, and no matter what, he kept coming up with this positive result. And it was most uh, dramatically noticed when he tested it on the top of a mountain, Mount Wilson. Uh, in California and so this is basically he, he noticed that the speed of light changes depending on where the earth is around the Sun which basically proves that the earth is moving through a cosmological medium okay a sea an ocean of ether and this is the fundamental premise that will allow science and engineering and physics and all these other uh, fields of knowledge to come together again and realize that there is a unified field. Yeah, the unified field that everybody's looking for. It's already been known. They destroyed it from the model and now it's like, where's the unified field? Where's the unified field theory? It's been right in front of you the whole time. It's called the ether and men like Tesla basically built our world on the assumption that it does exist uh, because it does.
So that's my message for you today. I'd be happy to hear any comments. Again, I'm not a physicist. I'm just an interested observer who wants, I'm curious to know the nature of reality. Okay, I'm magically musically minded and uh, you know, <laughs> people can say whatever they want about what I, you know, am credible of saying or whatever, but Dayton Miller is the man who disproved Einstein, a physics G, and um, if you want to basically say that they're that I'm just crazy, you're gonna have to take it up with the data, okay? I'm not gonna play this little kindergarten game of, well, you, me, 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 you don't have a little piece of paper from the university I like, or, you know, this other guy with a piece of paper, he said all these other things. Okay, let's talk about the issue. Let's really get to the core of it. I want to have a conversation. I don't want to argue. I want to genuinely discuss the emerging, unfolding truth with you. So, let me know what you think. Anyway, cheers. Happy evening, and uh, may the force be with you, because the force is the ether. <laughs>